Hello, Key Biscayne. It is Wednesday, April 15th, 2020, and this is your No One's Listening Show, episode 171. I am your host, Rafa. To my left is Anna. Hello, Key Biscayne. To her left is Manny. What's going on, Rafa? Hey, yo. To his left is Tony W. Hey there, everybody. Good to have him after. Welcome. Talking about having him on the show for a long time and then it just never happened and finally got you on the show, so thank you. To his left is Tony G. What's going on, everybody? Rafa, thanks for having me. Hell yeah. Welcome. And to his left is Lenny. Hey, guys. Nice to see you or hear you or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone's seeing me. All right. Well, let's start hey, how hey, we always Rafa, start. Rafa, is, is anyone here? I don't think anyone's here. Like, as far as the Zoom thing goes, no one's here, right? No, nobody's in here. I'm about to let... Don't talk... Please don't talk about the crowd. I've told you this. Don't talk about the crowd. <laughs> they're they're asking me right here behind me. Last year, nobody's watching. Everybody's listening. <laughs> um, last show, I, I, I went back and listened to it. And there's a whole part at the end where you name every single person listening or in the thing. And it's the most boring, what? like seven minutes of the damn show. When you I, go I, listen to I like when we at one point mention who's listening or making comments on Facebook. I think that's fun. If but, someone has yeah. a comment, Great. we'll do it, but let's not go into, Hey, Got shout it. out, shout out, shout, shout Boring. Okay. Boring. Anyway, okay. talk to me, you guys. Did anything happen during your weekend? And I'm not talking about anything serious. I'm talking about, we can talk about the serious stuff later, talk of the town, but I'm talking about anything you guys did this weekend that is notable, any Key Biscayne yes. stuff. Oh, tell me, Anna. Key Biscayne, long time Key Biscayne, lives off the key right now, but long time <laughs> Key Rat Lala, uh, it was her birthday on Saturday. And so oh. her girlfriends organized one of those birthday parades where you drive by a front yard and wave. When they invited me, I have to admit that I was like, what is this? Cheesy little kid stuff, you know? I had the best time ever. Awesome. <laughs> it was so fun. She went to Rachel Alpert's house um, off the key, and they were in the front yard, and we surprised her and drove in with, like, a balloon off the car and loud music, and we all sang and saw each other for the first time in about a month. And I have to say, when Ruff and I drove away, I was so sad. I just, because I don't know when I'll see everybody again. <laughs> And it, it felt Aww. so good to feel connected to a group of, like, 15 people. It's the first time I've had that sort of interaction. And it, it really highlighted the pain. 15? That's against the law, isn't it? It was, I mean, it was about, like, 15 of us. We're all in, the car, in different cars, just, like, driving oh, in by. Different cars. Drove around yeah. aimlessly. It was really funny. But that, I think that was the highlight of my freaking weekend. <laughs> Yeah, it was like, and the guy though. that came by and he sang happy oh, birthday. Oh, yeah, a jogger comes by and he's like, is it someone's birthday? We're like, yeah, she just went inside for a second. She's coming back out. He's like, I'd love to sing her happy birthday. We're like, sure, why not? The Aww. guy busts out the nicest voice singing happy birthday. And was, I think he felt connected. We felt connected. Everybody was happy. It was a good moment. I'm not going to lie. It was a really nice moment. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Other than that, I don't think we did much. Well, uh, I, I had a birthday also this weekend. Yes, happy birthday, happy Manny! Happy birthday, Manny! Thank yeah, you. thank you, thanks. And so, you know, it's a lot. Every all these people having, you know, we're having birthdays during this this period. This is going to be an unforge- unforgettable birthday. I mean, it's you. You supposedly you can't do all these things, you know. So people are getting creative, and uh, so Nancy says, "Hey, um, you got anything planned for your birthday?" I was like, "No, not really." She's like, "All right, uh, be at my house by four. And make sure you have a good lunch and bring your bike. I was like, okay. So I'm thinking that maybe we're going to hang out in her front yard and people are going to do a drive-by or something like that. <laughs> and instead, uh, Nancy planned this party. She sent out this invitation. Uh, Manny's birthday ride-by, a ride-by. Stay where you are. Stay safe at home. This birthday boy is going to make house calls. <laughs> Offer a drink, play music, wave a sign, do a little dance. It's all game for, uh, for Coach Manny. Please RSVP by signing up at the Touch Doc, and uh, we'll see you. So nice. she put together, there was a list of like 10 people where we rode by their house, and they're out there in the front yard. People setting up like cool stuff and just awesome. really nice, man. Beautiful. Aww. Uh, right around the community. But Manny posted some pictures on Instagram, and I have to say I got all choked up about it, too. I thought it was such a good plan. 
It was and it was incredible. Made it nice. <laughs> and it, and the best part was, was you know, we got to nice. we got to like sit up, you know, sit with people or stand with people or whatever it was for a few minutes, have some laughs, and then it was like, okay, we got to go, you know. And so like we would hop on the bike and go to the next spot. So Nancy and I really got to spend a great day together. That's awesome. Oh, nice. That's that's, that's a, a smart point. idea. That was an excellent idea. I called yeah. it bar hopping. I told Manny, I'm like, oh, it's like you went bar hopping, you know. Especially so it, I, I mean, I don't know. I, uh, Nancy made up these little um, hand sanitizers. Well, I, she got them from Elena from a zero waste culture. So we had party favors uh, for everybody, little hand sanitizers. Oh, cute. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. So cool. Good job, Nancy. Yeah. I like cute, it. Yeah, cute idea. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. And thank you, everybody who was, uh, who was part of it. Thanks for all the love uh, from everybody that's, that's come my way. I'm yeah. Thank you. Cool. You guys, uh, anybody else with any weekend talk? Uh, I just did the same old. I did a little paddle and, and hung out, you know, paddling, organizing my paddle underwear, underwear drawer. <laughs> 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 I mean, yep. I drinking, think for, a lot of drinking. I, I think for us, we, uh, me and my family, we woke up like around 630 to watch um easter service on youtube and then ron herbal it was ron herbal's birthday and there was like a a big procession we met at the church we drove by his house um the fire department sent a truck it was really really cool and then just like you guys uh we went to visit my wife's grandmother all in our cars we just drove out there like it was a surprise to her um she got emotional like my wife and my my mother-in-law and like Aww. They were all like emotional. Same reason, because you know it's they they can't get too close to one another. They don't know when they're going to be able to see each other, embrace each other, and um, it was really cool to see to to like experience that. You know, yeah. it, was, it was really cool. Think oh. about it. These yeah. all, all, the last three stories have all been the same. You know, yeah. uh, people doing things that they would never have done before. You never would be like, yeah. hey, I'm just going to drive by your house and wave at you. <laughs> <laughs> and then or I'm not going to get there. And five minutes later, I'm going to be like, OK, I got to go. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Tony, did you say you woke up at 630 for a service? Yeah. The service starts at 630? Sunrise. Yeah, the sunrise service. Oh, no way. I had no idea. That's nice. Oh. Have you ever been to the sunrise service at the beach club? No. Oh, I remember last year, and I remember that the the community church does this cool thing where they walk across all the way, all the way to the to the beach, or at least yeah, they did that beautiful. last year, which I thought was awesome. They, they do it every year. They yeah. plant the beach, and they, then they do a sunrise oh, service. There. It's really spectacular. It was like a it's like one non-denomination. Of you know, it's, it doesn't matter. You can anyone can go. So wait, Tony, yeah. your sunrise service was on video. Yeah, well, we we had to reach out to Paul Zuccarini. We reached out to uh, Chief Press and Mayor Davey just to make sure that they were okay with us going and filming it out there. Gotcha. So five of us went out there Thursday morning. Um, We all had masks on. We all made sure that we stayed far away from each other. We took the cross out there. We built the cross. We buried the cross in the sand. And then then, um, I gave the sermon um, right there with the... As the sun was oh, rising. Oh, cool. That's beautiful. Beautiful. No, so you That's were the awesome. guy. You didn't say that. I didn't get that part. I didn't, I didn't know that. I thought it was just a... Zoom. <laughs> yeah. No, or just something that had happened before, from a year before or something. Well, no, this was like, we filmed it Thursday because a Kibiskan Community Church has been doing sunrise service at the Beach Club for over 50 years. I think it's like 54 years running, and we wanted to kind of keep that uh, tradition going yeah. uh, we were hopeful in the beginning of this corona thing that we we're gonna, we were going to be able to gather physically but um we still wanted the beach to be part of the service so we went and filmed right. it out there that's beautiful that's yeah. uh that's a beautiful thing that's mm-hmm. great that's very nice thanks tony all right anybody have anything else before tony we move w. on tony Winton. uh nothing really exciting i i will say it's interesting though because of the lack of normal contact, uh, I don't know about you, but I have been FaceTiming with people I never FaceTime with before, like <laughs> just family members. I would just call someone or whatever it is. We never never felt the need to do a FaceTime because we would see them all the time. Yeah. So there's a, it's a whole new experience interacting with people on video that are, that are, I guess, they're not distant like work. I'm doing all the, a lot of Zooms and a lot of Hangouts as everybody else is. 
but uh, interacting with your family this way, maybe I'm just different. It's, it's unusual. It is it's, unusual. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's, cre- it's, cre- it's created some, some humorous e- events. <laughs> Tony, wh- why don't you tell these guys what you told me before the show? Well, I mean, I, I can't, uh, I'm so d- desperate to get out of here. I've been in quarantine uh, basically since April 27th because I'm COVID positive. April um, 27th? Yes. Mark, uh, that was, the, yeah, that, that's Mark. the, twi- I've been, I've been in quarantine since the 27th and um, March hopefully 27th. I will be out on Friday. I'm sorry, March 27th, March 27th. Okay. And um, the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the uh, test you know, I had I had the exposure, got sick um, about five days later, which is the normal incubation period, um, and then you know have been dealing with that since then. Oh wow! I didn't and know. Uh, you know, went and got a uh, a test result, so so it's a confirmed uh, positive. And I I blogged about it. I wrote a story about um, I think the the larger issue that we're going to be dealing with as a society is the anger um, that is going to infect everything beyond just the problems of the virus which are massive and the economy yeah. which is massive it is the the uh, the sheer disruption in our society and this where is this anger going to go how are we going to deal with it are we going to do something constructive with it or is it just going to spiral into some kind of even deeper darker circle of polarization that we already are in mm. and so that's uh that's it so i i, I came out and then and then you know, just been dealing day by day. It's um, the weirdest thing has been the loss of smell. Oh, wow. uh, it turned it turned off like a light switch. Um, oh, no everything was fine. I, I had a cough. I had a little bit of you know uh, symptoms that were. Fever. I, guess, kind of, I heard fever is a steady thing, right? Yeah, fever. I never had a fever. I had chills. I had really bad sweats the first night uh, when I had strong symptoms. Uh, it was difficult to sleep. I uh, didn't see any visions of Mario, Mario Cuomo, <laughs> but I did, no, but I, but I, I mean, that was a, that was a rough night and then it's been getting better. Uh, still like uh, uh, coughing, a lot of crud in the chest, uh, some weird swelling of my feet, which is, I don't, I don't understand that one at all. <laughs> losing, yeah, all losing, <laughs> yeah, losing, losing the, um, losing the, the sense of smell though is just bizarre. Um, has it like, not I hope, come back yet? No, it is not. So mm-hmm. I, 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 if I hold a, a basil leaf to my nose, nothing. nothing. Wow. Garlic, nothing. How it's bizarre. like holding a plastic, a plastic fern or something. What? Or pla- yeah, it's completely non-existent. Does that Tony, affect, um, does that affect you, your uh, taste? I don't mean taste? to. Tony, I'm I don't sorry. mean to be, I mean, be personal, but I mean, do you live alone or how have you been? No, no, I no, my my I'm here with my wife, and she's yeah. almost certainly positive now. She got tested uh, uh, just the other day by at the. Uh, the, the new test that the foundation is running with the village, which is good. Finally, that that's up and running. Um, and, you know, I mean, I don't think there's any doubt about what the result would be because been, I didn't even know I was positive for several days. Yeah. <laughs> symptomatic. Yeah. She's been symptomatic or mildly, mildly. Yeah. I mean, do you even try to do you even say, hey, you know what? You're just going to get it. Or do you try to not do it? Like, I mean, are you running around the house with, you know, wipe down everything? Well, we, we did it for a while, uh, for a few days after I was, I got the, the, the test result, but then, uh, Irene started having some mild symptoms and it's like, okay, well, we're, oh you know, the doctor <laughs> said, so well, you stop wasting your time. Basically. Plus, <laughs> Tony, Tony, I have a question. How, how long did it take to get the result back from your test? Um, three days. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's good. Technically. I mean, yeah. she that would was have to quarantine week. anyway, even if she didn't have it just by being exposed to you. So you may as well right. just kind of go with the flow. Um, and wait, yeah. I'm curious about this uh, the sense of smell thing because it, it's so crazy. The, does it affect the way things are tasting for you? Yes, uh, I still have some taste, but the taste is muted and it's mm-hmm. different. So yeah. things taste more, for me, taste more acidic than they used to. Oh. And I'm not really sure why. If you don't have the sense of smell is filling in the gaps, yeah. you know, uh, in, in your brain about what something tastes like. Yeah. Smell is so important. If you subtract that from something and you're just relying on your taste buds, things taste different. Of course. So it's a little muted yeah. and, and, and yeah, it's just, it's a very odd feeling. I'm hoping people say it comes back like, uh, in a couple of weeks. So, wow. um, I hope so. Otherwise, I could work for a sanitation company or change diapers or I'm immune, you know. 
PSI. You know what That's I did it. not do this weekend? What? Weekend talk is I did not hear my neighbor play We Are the World. Oh, that's I right. I sat there. So tell the people what, what, what well, the thing is. So every week, every Friday, for three weeks in a row, and last Friday was the fourth week, um, the neighbor that's across from me, I live in Tidemark, so someone that lives in one of the townhouses facing south, um, he plays We Are the World and his hair is extremely loud. We all, whoever is excited about it, go on the balcony and I dance and I wave at him and he waves back and we clap at the end. And, it, you know, the first week it was like, yeah, are we quarantined? I don't know. But it just felt fun. The second week I got like, wait, I love this. The third week I was waiting for it. I was ready. Had a glass of wine ready. 6 p.m. on Friday. This week, Rafa came over. He <laughs> made me a martini. I was on a Zoom call with my girlfriends, ready to show off my cool Friday evening event. <laughs> and the guy did not come through, and I got very sad because I've been—I was looking forward to it. It's something that became part of this whole strange story. Was we are the world very loud on Friday? Oh, I wonder what happened to him. What's going on? Did you find I don't out? Know. I'm going to write him a little letter and leave it at his door. I don't know. Throw like a paper airplane. Paper airplane it over to him. That's perfect. If not, we'll play if it. If not, we're going to play it. I have a feeling there you go. someone might have complained because he put it not as loud the week before. I don't know. Don't want to jump to conclusions, but he's definitely home. So <laughs> I, saw someone, I saw someone in Keat Colony. I, someone posted this. Um, there was a whole band on their balcony. There was a whole playing. band. Yeah, we saw that. We saw it. We went out on the other, on the staircase, uh, on the balcony That's on the staircase cool. on the other side of the building to see it. It's an ocean sound. And... But there were a lot of people on that balcony, and I don't think they were all family members. I'm just saying. Uh-oh. Yeah, there was a lot of people on that balcony. It made you wonder, where all these people come from? Like, it was fun. You people guys are, gathered to see well, it. Well, whatever. It was, yeah, it was nice. And then they said that this weekend they're going to play like in the downstairs. downstairs and we're like, that doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, that sounds a little weird, but stay tuned for the Key Colony Concert Part 2. Key Colony Concerts update next week. Next week. Okay, so uh, speaking of concerts, uh, what are you guys listening to? That's the next segment of the program. It is uh, Wednesday, April 15th, 2020. This is the No One's Listening Show, episode 171. Remember, you can subscribe to the podcast at ratradio.net in whatever podcast flavor you choose. And uh, do you guys have any music for us? I have something yeah, for you guys. Okay, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead and start, Anna. No, you can go and then we'll do a to the left. So okay. This one, I mean, it's I think it's everybody's favorite right now. <laughs> Real cheesy tune. Oh no. But I'm hooked and every time I hear it, I have to hear it all the way to the to the end whenever it shows up. Is it We Are the World? It's uh <laughs> by a guy named Tony Iggy. It was released in 2010 and it's called Astronomia. And it's been hard to miss this past couple, you know, this past like 2 weeks. It goes a little something like this. So oh my the, god, that's, what that is. that's great. That's the music from the from the Paul Bearers meme that's been going around where the, oh, guys, the Paul Bearers meme. That's yeah. right. And so hilarious. every time somebody said you found you shazammed it. Uh, every, yeah, every time somebody <laughs> sends me one of the videos and the little song starts, at first I thought it was annoying, and then later I was like, I gotta watch this whole thing to the end every time because I like the little tiki tiki song. So that's hilarious. That's Tony Iggy. Astronomia from 2010. Wow, Rafa, you just uh, you just like solved a lot of mysteries. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> that's your what song. is that song? Yeah, I always wanted to know what that song was. <laughs> oh my god! Well, mine's a little more serious. <laughs> my song is from 1968, I think, from Gilberto Gil's self-titled album, Gilberto Gil. 68. The song, Lenny. The song is called Coragem para Suportar, which means courage to support it's like take it like you have to have the courage to keep going like or else just fucking leave you know which that's how i feel right now (laughs) okay let me put it on loud here for you guys Lá no sertão quem tem coragem pra suportar tem que viver pra ter coragem pra suportar e somente nice it's awesome i hadn't heard that that was good yeah um, I'm listening to one that uh, a buddy of mine just sent me today. It's uh, Grazing in the Grass. It's a jam. You probably recognize this one also. Hugh, uh, Hugh Mesichella. 
This is um, this is just an instrumental jam. Oh no! Do you hear it? I can't really hear it. You can't hear it. Oh, uh, you know what I think it does. It like cuts out the. We should have done this um, in the audio thing. I think uh, Zoom automatically like takes away background noise if you don't set it not to yeah. and All it thinks right. when you play a song that it's background noise well, well, let, let me try can to it. <laughs> all right i'll try mine and see if it works can you guys hear me yeah okay so mine is i've been trying to think you know go away in like in a fantasy world like i'm on vacation i miss you know no, like you guys jazz fest is supposed to be next week i'm really bummed i love going to see live music it's really bringing me down that I can't go. And so I was listening to Ziggy Marley, uh, Beach in Hawaii. Don't ask me the year. You guys are good about knowing that. <sighs> Hold on. Can you hear it? Yeah. Uh, oh, not anymore. Not anymore. Not really, not really. <laughs> oh, man. I've got to work on that. I've got to work on that. You'll have to sing it, buddy. Walking on the beach. All right. Nice, nice. Well, went through. That's awesome. It's an awesome song. I wish I was listening to live music next week. I was supposed to leave on the twenty first. Uh, I'm bummed. Bummed. And it looks like when it's going to be rescheduled for. They, were, they said in canceling. October. They October? said in October, but now the mayor said that that's not going to happen. Probably the mayor not. Of New Orleans one. is getting a lot of flag for Mardi Gras, so she's decided to pull all events for 2020. Apparently, yeah. So I don't nothing's going to happen until 2021. But that's what's happening down there. I'm crying. I'm we, were, we were going also the following weekend, but now we don't. Now we don't. I'm have bummed. <laughs> That's like my little music getaway. But anyway, anyway. it is what it is. All right. Uh, <laughs> Tony's? Who wants to go first? I'll go. It's, it's, uh, I've been listening to a, a song that actually just, it just came out on Sunday or, sa- or Good Friday. Um, it's from a local church here in Miami. It's called Sheltered In. It's based off of uh, Psalm 91. So this is what it sounds like. Don't put it so close. Because I think it... Yeah, if it, you put it a little further, I think it works better. Huh? No, I gotta teach you guys how to do that on the next sound check. Yeah, I was doing mine in my mic, and it didn't work in my mic. I know Zoom, it's Zoom. Zoom cuts out background noise, so if it's not someone's voice speaking, it's like Lenny oh. somehow works. <laughs> I tuned mine That's to not cool. do that, but um, you have to do it in the options. All right, cool. Well, we'll see if it works for me. Right. <laughs> yeah, one more time. Uh, I, I, I am listening to, uh, I was actually getting into some, obviously a lot of television, way too much, and uh, was watching the Hudsucker Proxy, which features as its main musical theme, uh, a piece of classical music, uh, Spartacus and Phrygia, which is a uh, art from an Armenian composer named uh, Kachaturian. So I think it's a beautiful melody, and I've just been getting into it. Yeah. Nice. I could faintly hear it, could faintly hear it, but I do hear that melody. Yeah, it's kind of quiet. Oh, yeah, you're man, right. It was happening, and then we started talking, and it went <laughs> yeah. away. It is beautiful <laughs> already, though. <laughs> it wasn't happening. Yep. It's just, you're hearing it a little bit. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> so that's a little sad, but I kind of been fits the mood, I guess. It totally fits the mood. <laughs> pretty though. We can Very live pretty. In we can yeah. live in it. All right. Well, that's what you're listening to. Go check out those uh, tracks. Keep you busy during this uh, annoying little little thing of this pandemic we're having okay moving on to the talk of the town and all the stuff that's happening on the key and uh the first thing i want to ask you about 
is that uh, on officially, I guess on it happened on Saturday, is that we are. Um, it's mandated that we wear masks inside the places that we go, and the workers wear masks. How are you finding wearing the mask? Mine is constantly falling off my face, and it makes me touch my face a lot more than I should. <laughs> so I'm wondering about you guys if it gets you hot, any of that stuff. Oh, what are you? Are you? What's your mask, Rafa? Is it that that tablecloth, that napkin that you have on your? This face? is all I have. Inside of it, there's a there's an actual surgical mask that hurt my face when we would wear it. So I put it, I cut it up and put it in here. Like I took off the things and put it under here. Oh, cool! And, that's that's yeah. smart. You have a layer in there because it looks like just an open bottom. I do. But tell me about your so. Well, uh, I, actually, I today. I mean, I, I've been wearing the mask when I've gone inside places already for more than since I think it was Monday when they said it had to happen. Uh, but I've been doing that for you know a few weeks for sure. Today I was at Winn Dixie. I really didn't want to go to Winn Dixie today, man. And but I went, and I wore one of the sort of the harder masks, you know, like the I've, I've usually been wearing the bandana around town when I'm riding my bike, but I wore the harder mask. And when I'm in there, you know, like all of a sudden you feel like you got a cough, you know, <laughs> if like or if you think if you start talking about lice, your head gets itchy, you know, it's like, oh, yeah. oh shit, I can't cough in here. I get nervous and then if when I need cough, a cough. It'd be really bad because I have this huge mask on and then I can't take the mask off and rub my nose because I've already touched the cart, <laughs> you know, it's like, so I was with my nose, my mask on and my nose like itchy for 30 minutes. It was super uncomfortable. Yeah, I agree. I'm very uncomfortable. Hot. I just put a bandana and I'm just hating it. I hate it. I like the bandana I because I, 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 you can go uh, around you're like an outlaw. You know, it's like you can ride around. Nobody knows who you are. Well, we saw a guy at CVS yesterday with his uh, full f- covered face helmet. <laughs> and we're like, this guy can just do whatever right now. You know, but, do whatever. <laughs> Wait, was that Gus Alonso? And then he got on his motorcycle and left. But yeah. Oh, motorcycle. Gus Alonso has a full hazmat suit with a glass mask and the thing. He he showed me a picture. It was, I mean, good for him. I mean, if I, I mean, if I was Gus Alonso, I would too. <laughs> I don't know how people are biking with the face masks on. I no. can barely breathe under that thing when I'm at Winn Dixie for twenty minutes and I freak <laughs> out. How are people? I, I don't jogging? think you're required to wear a mask while you're bicycling <laughs> no you're no. not people a are, rule people are doing it <laughs> and i'm like how are you breathing right now and jogging too I don't it's know. true it's creative it's like every day's halloween now it's great it's, you know, <laughs> i hate it yeah. everybody uh, at the streets are full of families and everyone's wearing masks i mean that's halloween. <laughs> I, I have a question uh for the for the iphones that do face recognition does the does the mask screw it up does it work <laughs> oh, with the yeah. mask no it doesn't work good question <laughs> I had to redo. Add a photo with yourself on a mask. mask. I have to redo my face recognition with the mask on. Oh, you did, or no? That would be dumb. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I've been wearing the mask and the gloves, and I just feel like the same thing uh, you guys were talking about. Like, I touch my face more than I would <clears throat> now. Like the whole the the glove thing. Like, unless you're washing your hands after you touch anything, like. It's almost He's pointless because the cross contamination. Yeah, you touch your um, wallet. The minute you, you take your gloves your off and you touch your phone, yeah. boom, <laughs> you're back to square one. So uh, uh, yesterday I was actually in line. It was the first time I went to Winn Dixie where I saw that they were actually re- uh, regulating the amount of people that were in the store. So there was a line out front. Yeah. Um, I was actually j- right behind Manny's youngest uh, youngest kid, Mati. Um, looked like he was going there to like exchange coins for cash, <laughs> which I thought was a weird, which I thought was like a weird thing to like risk going to Win Dixie for. But hey, <laughs> Tony, it was, uh, he he grabbed he grabbed all the change out of the change um, dish here because he needed deodorant. So he was <laughs> That's deodorant. hilarious. So it was like a hygiene thing. Yeah, yeah. That's, That's funny. funny. That's really funny. That reminded I me of. I have so- Oh. I haven't been in a store in five weeks. Oh wow! I that's crazy. <laughs> Lenny's been paddleboarding. <laughs> well, and I order I order everything online. Everything. It, the I, thing is, I like going because it's like my event. <laughs> it's like, nope. Let me go. Well, now even people are people are taking precautions when they get Grubhub or um, right. Amazon or whatever. Like when you get the stuff, you're still supposed to get rid of like my. 
like my wife is like kind of like over the top with this so like we get rid of the like we almost burn everything that comes to the, we burn what it came in and then we sanitize all of it and we like make it wait for 30 minutes before we go back and even look at it and that's hilarious. Um, when we were uh when we were doing the birthday ride around the other day we were passing by a friend's house and um they were she was outside so we got to stop and say hello and whatever but she was outside and her whole front uh stairwell was full of groceries she they were everything was out and she's like i don't know i don't know if i'm crazy or what but i'm like what are you doing she's wiping down everything yeah, i do that, I do that. Well. yeah i did it as well <laughs> And, and, you know, Tony was talking about the gloves and the cross-contamination. You start thinking to yourself, the glove becomes a nuisance. Yeah. And it was yeah. like, wait, did I, did I touch my phone with the glove? Oh, no, now I did. No, wait, let me take it off. Oh, but I touched this. And then, right. oh, no, where do I put the glove now? And right. I put the glove there and I did this. You know what? I'm just going to throw the glove on the street. But, you know, what's, I, I think just a note of science here, the, the, the reports that it's coming from surface contamination is really, that does not seem to be the main mode of transmission. Right. It's almost completely aerosol. Aerosol. Yeah. I can I can tell you that in my case, every surface that we were all working around was being continuously sanitized, wiped down, everything. And it was because we were simply, you know, Together. probably in that five, six foot uh, range, but for several hours. Mm. So that's the problem. It's just, it just, it's aeros- aerosolized. Tony, were you able to uh, track your contamination Oh yeah, no, I know exactly how it happened. Oh wow, that's that. That's why I mean I'm unusual. I can I know I know exactly what happened, and uh, it's it's it was a setting where I was uh, working with other people, and we were aware of the social distancing. We were aware of making sure not to touch each other or anything like that. We had Purell. Things were being wiped down, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But even still, just because there there was a uh, aerosol component, you know, someone, people were, you know, you're, in, you're inhaling other people's breath. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. And that's, that's how it's being spread. That's I, uh... the number one way. Well, somebody from your workplace was Correct. symptomatic and, and were you the only one? Oh, no, no, that person was not symptomatic. Oh, they, oh, they, they were, were asymptomatic. Not. They were asymptomatic. Every Correct. That, that's weird... why it's so, that's why it's so weird. Yeah. You don't know and you won't know Did they until ever you start getting people? sick. Exactly. <laughs> Did they end up having symptoms yeah. or? or um, they were, I think they were fairly mild. I mean, that we've been lucky that with the people in the group that I was in, everybody's been pretty mild, uh, mild experiences. Oh, so but, it's more, everybody yeah. got it. Yeah. So, I mean, and that's, that's kind of the, the scenario that you're looking at is um, uh, the, the, this thing is incredibly communicable, but it's not, I don't think, I, I have yet to hear confirmed surface contamination from people getting packages or, yeah, you can get it, it's possible, but everything, all, the, the main vector, everything I've read in my own personal experiences, it was not that, it was yeah. it was inhaled. I also, I just, my girlfriends and I were talking about this because one friend is doing all the cleaning of the packages and stuff and we're like, what, are you going to keep doing that for the next, you know, two years? Because if not, then what do you, you know, yeah, it's a lot. how it's long a lot. are you going to keep doing it for? So and you never did it before for other kind of stuff, whatever. I, I, it's, I think it's, we should be inventing, some decision, kind of but quick, I, I, I'm not going to do it. We should be inventing some kind of a, like a quick spray or wipe down system where it's all just, phew. I, you know, I'm, I thought about that going into the elevator the other day. I wish there was like a button where it goes poof, like this little smoke that disinfects <laughs> everything, and then I get in, you know. Yeah. And I could press the button. You guys, do you guys ever remember that movie with Jack Black and Ben Stiller? He invented that stuff you spray on dog poop and it. Baby yeah. poo ride. Baby poo ride. <laughs> That's my favorite movie. He yeah. gave Ben Stiller a chance to jump on, and he <laughs> declined it, and then he got salty about it. Yeah. <laughs> what, did it what did it do? Envy. It, it just it just vaporized the poop right there. You didn't need a bag, nothing. It just disintegrated. That's where we don't know. <laughs> it would just disappear. The poo would disappear. We need a vaporize for the Rona. Yeah, for real. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, I don't want my groceries to vaporize. Yeah, that's hilarious. That's a good, All right. That's a uh, what'd you guys think uh, moving on of a uh, little Easter Bunny tour? Did you guys hear it? Did you guys see it? You probably heard it. Well, I was uh, I was out on the water that day. I was I was out paddling and with in front there by um, Nixon's, and I heard the sirens kick up. And remember, these the sirens were coming on the heels of. 
I think the night before or what night was it that they did the side? Two nights before. Yeah. Two, nights Two nights before. before. So this time it was the Easter Bunny, and I paddled by someone's house. All these kids and their parents were in the backyard, and I said, hey, are you guys going to go out there and see the Easter Bunny? They didn't realize what it was. They ran out and got it. But, um, you know, why don't you start with two nights before, Rafa? Okay, so two nights before, we get uh, a bunch of sirens blaring going down the key. And, you know, you're like, what is this? Whatever. I'm driving on Harbor, and I run into you know, this caravan of police. And I'm thinking, well, something must have happened. And these guys are just going, uh, you know, they're getting off the key or something. But no, it turns out it's like this parade to thank people for staying home. I'm there in my car. Um, So I pull over to the side, give a thumbs up and whatever. And they did a whole parade around the key with the sirens blaring at about from like 8 to 9 o'clock p.m. Um, Then Manny has some more insight into this. But this is like, tell me what you said, Manny. I don't want to say it. I'll I'll let you say it. it's not really inside. It's just that, uh, you know, the next day I was out um, taking Chico out and I was, you know, distance talking to one of the neighbors and he was, he was like a little upset. He was, he asked, he didn't know what it was last night. Um, I had to tell him what it was because I went down and I, you know, I, I thought it was cool and, but he didn't know what it was. And he said that some people in his, in his building with their kids, they were freaking out. They were scared. Um, they were thinking if they had to leave or something or, you know, they didn't know what was going on. So they were a little, they were a little, you know, they didn't know what happened. So I think that was maybe one out of a hundred people may have thought that. I think overall people were really excited about it and happy about it and knew that it was happening. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I can tell you that I was the delivery people thought that they were being locked in. I was uh, waiting for a food oh. delivery at that point and they could not get out. Oh. Um I actually, uh, I actually messaged the mayor because people were calling me, what's going on? And the mayor got back to me right away and said, yes, uh, that it was a parade, essentially. And he had not been, he also said he had not been informed very much in advance. So um, better, better next time, right? There'll be better, better alerting that, uh, that that would happen. That's really the main thing. Well, the next time was two days later. It was Easter Sunday, and that's when the Easter Bunny went around, and that's the beginning of Rafa's story. Listen, I Emma, thought that was so cute and so great. And all the kids would run out of their house and just look at the Easter bunny great. going by. There was like four Easter bunnies. I, heard. I think the Easter bunny is great, but I, I thought it was funny that the siren was continuous though. It was just like maybe a siren when you arrive somewhere, but guys, it was on for like four hours. It was, it was. It was. Well, I heard, I heard a really good suggestion. Um, and it was, why not play, like, beautiful Easter, Easter music, music. Classical music well, or, like, what Tony was listening to this week? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, it's we don't have to complain about it anymore because it's yeah. Easter's over and it's there's not going to be another Easter bunny going around. Um, Hopefully this never has to happen again. <laughs> well, anytime exactly. soon. The what are you doing for the 4th of July? So I'll, I'll talk Rafa. to you guys about that because we had a meeting uh, the other day, but... Before that, I was thinking to myself, it would be good. At, like an ice cream truck sound would have been perfectly adequate. <laughs> Something like this. Oh, that would have been annoying. <laughs> or the, like, or the, that the reminds me of annoying. <laughs> or the afilador little sound, uh, you know? That's funny. I, could, I kept thinking about the poor Easter bunny, man. He's yeah, got to listen to that for an hour. Because I was very far from the sirens and, living in Kikolani, even though he did come inside. But I who, heard them for who hours, had that guys. Job? <laughs> Imagine what he heard. Well, that was that was part of the um, one of the things where like a lot of the complaints came from uh, were from, you know, Key Colony and from Ocean Club in these huge condos with it's like going into a canyon. Yeah. And those sirens like they, they, they do the full loser lap in there like they hit every corner. <laughs> and, you know, that's uh, at, at some point you have to either think it's the end of the world or these guys are lost. <laughs> <I'm talking about. laughs> I see I see that. um I see that Nash Lang is on here, and he's he's commenting that he has to deal with the sirens every day. Get over it. We've only had to deal with them twice. So <laughs> Nash, right. is, uh, Nash is telling us to get a little thicker skin. I agree that I never complained on the chat. Or, I complained to Rafa, who was sitting next to me, and I'm like trying to read the paper. I'm like, these effing sirens. Boom. That's it. But people who are, are putting on the chats, like complaining about sirens, give me a break. That's yeah. You, we have get over, get over it. it. You the fucking could, Easter yeah. Bunny siren. 
It's over. Complain to your to your spouse or whatever. Yeah, we tried to sign up because I think the original plan was that um, the Easter Bunny was going to make door to door house calls, and I think what happened was I was talking to Dave Carreño, who works Man. under Todd Hofferberth, and just the 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 demand was was too high, so yeah. they decided. Then they got multiple Easter bunnies, multiple <laughs> trucks, and, uh, you know, like so they could hit everybody. The the, the demand was so high, they're like, uh oh, we need more than one Easter bunny. So. <laughs> is, that, is that why the Easter bunny was on like four different cars? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What if it's the like kids old, saw two like of them old, at the same time, like crossing? <laughs> that's not good it yeah you can't happened. if you're gonna if you're gonna have multiple easter bunnies they have to be in distinctly different places on the island it's at the a same small time island that's that's you know risky guys <laughs> yeah all right so that's uh your easter bunny and sirens talk let's see oh this one i really wanted to ask lenny did you take the antibodies test oh, you yeah. said last week that okay. you talked about last so, week that ethos pharmacy at Square is offering an antibodies test for people who right. may have already had it to know if they already had it. Right. And you said that you had signed up. Did you get to yeah. take it? So there's a, there's a caveat to that, which I didn't know about. Oh, so I did take it and it was negative. Oh, but he's but he's convinced is because I had it so long ago. Oh, it, it, he said it only works if you had it like within four. You know, if you got over it within four weeks. I I, I I did mine in February. So he's like, right, so I'm going to have to wait for another test that's going to come, whatever, that they actually take blood out. This is just the finger thing to get the real thing. Well, I'm glad I did. And you st- did you still have to pay for it? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm supposed to take it on Friday, but, you know, I if I think I had whatever I had, it was in December. And that was yeah. Yeah, so, so can you cancel your appointment? You can cancel it. Oh, did you already pay for it? Yeah, I already paid for it. I mean, I'm, I mean, just try. I don't know. You can talk to him. There's another one. He says it's 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 pretty accurate. They, I go. Have you had any positive things? He said yes pe- to people who didn't even think they even ha- like had it. Really? Okay, oh. that's all you need to know. My so, friend yeah. took it this week, and she said that she asked him a bunch of questions. She didn't mention that though, which is strange because she really got deep into <clears throat> the kinds of questions that she was asking him. He said that. Only about 10% of the people that are taking this test are testing to have had it or have the antibodies. Right. He says it's not that much. And then some of the people he's tested are, were actually current that they had because there's a way that oh, shows wow. you that you actually have it now, like at the moment. So then he sends them to go get the test, you know, the, 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 the more the official funny, test. The funny part right. about that durational thing so that right. you don't know four weeks back is that a lot right. of people who think they had it think they had it December, January, February. Right. Because that's when the flu right. was going around and a lot of people got knocked out because of it. So who's taking it that thought they had it less than a month ago? You know, like, I feel like that they were taking the test of, to see if they have it. That's we're in the middle I of know. it. I know. That's I don't true. know. We'll see. Like and, it's, and, 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 you know, I hear on the news that the, the, the right test isn't out yet, that we have to wait for it. So then I asked him, like, where'd you get, you know, it's, it's a little... Hey, Tony, at what point do you have to take another test, like an exit test? Um, I'm not required to. I mean, the doctors just said you, you have to wait the normal. The pe- recommended period is 14 days. So. so your day's coming up when? My day's coming up soon. It's going to be Friday. What do you, what do you have planned? Like, I, I want to hop on my bicycle and just get the heck out of Dodge. I want to go <laughs> up and down and up and down as far as I can go and just see see my island i mean i'm i mean <laughs> well tony i'll tell you you're gonna go you're gonna see your island and you're gonna see everyone who lives on your island if you go out between six and eight um i i you know one little game i like to play is count the cul-de-sacs okay you find every dead end on the key <laughs> i think uh i was talking to the like the mayor of miami and he had to he had to be symptom free for two weeks he took a test he, the test came back positive again, and then he had to be symptom free for another, I think, I want to say seven more days. And then he finally tested negative. And then after like 21 days, he was finally able to get out of self quarantine. Um, because he, he, as you guys know, he tested positive uh, yeah. early on in this thing. Yeah. So actually, have they, the key, have the, they asked you, have they asked you for uh, maybe to donate blood or anything like that? I, I have already been asked because I will have the the serum. 
Right. Um, and the the uh, so the plasma. Um, I in fact it was one situation I was asked. To, I unfortunately have the wrong blood type uh, for that person, um, but I I plan on donating as soon as I can because okay. there's, there's a lot a lot of need for it. Yeah. Um, awesome. So if you uh, guys no, haven't heard, the, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say on on Saturday. Uh, um, remind me in um, in calendar talk on um, um, there's a place where you can donate blood, you know, with Courtney Courtney Sullivan does it and the Rafa. right. I wonder if I'm eligible for that. I'll have to check, but you know, because I'm that's that's the key. So I'll ch- I'll follow up with you, Manny. All right. Um, so I just wanted to mention that the that Kibiscane is now offering the testing. I think they set up between yesterday and today at the at St. Agnes, and you can go to kbcovidtesting.org to sign up, and you can get it tested right here on the key again. They had it last week. They had something going with the firefighters, but then one of the firefighters got a fever. They had like a mobile testing thing, and so now they've got a uh, a third uh, third party company that's testing. Um, and I think it's at St. Agnes. It's definitely here on the key, and you can go to kbcovidtesting.org to uh, awesome. sign up. Hey, uh, Rafa, yeah. is, that, is that for 65-year-old and over? Or? Yes, for right everybody. now it's, it's for 65 and older. Um, but it wouldn't hurt to, for you to sign up if you think you have it or if you're in some kind of position because then they'll have your information. Yeah, they, uh, it's actually, it's a key scan residence, 65 and older, and I think there's something about... Um, uh, you know, conditions where, oh. what's, what's that called when you, when you have like uh, your high, high percentage? What, what is this? What, if <laughs> oh, you sorry. Are, like if you might be, if you might be prone to getting sick, underlying conditions. Uh, uh, I've, yeah. I've talked to like, I'm sure like most of you guys, we all know people in the medical field and um, most medical professionals and especially nurses I've talked to have said that, look, if you're not showing symptoms, then it, you you don't want to come get tested at least at a hospital because if you don't have it come into the hospital you'll probably get it here <laughs> yeah, yeah. and and there's no cure for it so the alternative is to just act like you have it you know like self quarantine for the two weeks until but I mean if you're not showing symptoms yeah I've heard from a lot of people in in this profession that that don't think that getting tested is even um, is even the right thing to do if you're not showing symptoms. Yeah, exactly. Well, because also you could get it on the way home or that Win dixie that night or whatever. Like, I don't understand getting tested if you really don't have symptoms. People right. are, I don't understand. All right, but that's more general talk. Let me yes, move on is. to something. This is, the, well, to something here. Tony G, talk to me about this. You mentioned somebody, some Islander article and somebody on the key and some kind of thing. I, I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> So I, um, unfortunately, um, I want to say uh, I got a call from a kid I used to coach who Manny has coached before as well, and he was basically telling me how his father had passed away, mm. and he he went out of his way to say like, look, it it wasn't Corona. They tested him while he was in the hospital. They tested him twice. He both tests came back negative, um, but the. Because when he showed up to the hospital, he was showing symptoms. They put him in the floor where they were treating corona positive people. Um, I think the last communication his family had with him was on a Tuesday. He passed away on a Sunday. Like they couldn't even talk to him on the phone. Wow. Couldn't wow. see him in person. His oldest son tried to go to the hospital and he almost got arrested because they would not let him go see his father. Um, and it was, a, it was a sad thing because. All of us on here that are from Key Biscayne, been here for any for for more than a one week, know how small the island is and how one rumor could spread like wildfire, and then all of a sudden, now he he passed from coronavirus. Right. Mm-hmm. The truth is that he tested twice, and both tests came back negative. Right. The autopsy or the official cause of death still hasn't been released because, as you can imagine, the hospitals are so. Right. overrun with deaths right now right. that they can't even like discharge people right? right so instead of having this family grieve in peace mm. they're grieving in public and and they can't even have a normal grieving per- like when my mom passed away i was we had a funeral 
She, right. We had open casket. There she was. Right. Or at the very like, least, you're coming together with friends and family yeah. in your home, and, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, these people, like this family, they can't even do that. And then apart from that, when you put the stigma of, oh, they had, he had coronavirus, so that means that his wife has it and his kid has it, and now they live in our apartment building, and we're going to have to try to get rid of them somehow. Long story short, like, she was tested. Um, the KB uh, fire department tested her. She came back negative. She did not have it. Mm. Right. But her son was in Winn-Dixie the other day and people were like looking at him and like distancing themselves really? from him. Wow. You know, so That's it's just fair. a sad situation. Here's a kid, 19, 20 year old kid. His father was his best friend. Mm. His father just passed away suddenly because he went to the hospital unbeknownst to his family. Mm. He checked himself in. What many people don't know is that six years ago, he was in a horrific accident where he lost all of his spleen, right? And the spleen fights off disease. So when he got, he, he actually died from complications due to something called a rhinovirus, right? He died his, at the end of the day, he had heart failure is what the doctors were telling them. But this guy, this kid, he's going out in public trying to grieve the loss of his best friend. And he's getting looks like, yo, get away from me. Uh, because I don't want to get sick. Like, you know, it, it, it's, it's so, just, so Tony, Tony, it was, it was, it was an awful story. And, um, you and I, you know, talked about it as well privately, but, but, a, a, a few days later, there's an article in the paper or actually it wasn't in the paper. It was online on Facebook or something. Uh, Rafa, what was that about? So it was, so from what I understand, the Islander published the fact that he had died from coronavirus, oh right? What? Well, I think what the island, because when I spoke to Mayor Davey before Mayor Davey sent out his video saying, hey, let's not spread information that we're not sure is true or not. Yeah. Uh, the Islander had spoken to his eldest son. Look, his wife is like, she, she's like obviously distraught. So it's hard for to have a, 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 a like conversation. But the oldest son is the one that is handling kind of like, speaking with the Islander and, and he basically told him like, look, he tested twice. Both were negative. Um, the Islander, basically what they did was they, they kind of did what media outlets do. Like they didn't fully say that that was the cause of death. They said it was like, uh, apparently or, or possibly, or, you know, like they, they put these things out there and that now that, now that they've been forced to say, Oh no, that wasn't it. Like it, like right. everyone I mean- sees the first part. They wouldn't have reported on it if it wasn't to say that. You know what I mean? If not, it would have yeah. just been somebody having, you know, somebody well, dying. Well, I think that the I think that the article's gone. Yeah, it's uh, gone, and they didn't issue a, a retraction. They just they just kind of deleted well, it and let it go they away. Like, that's, that's what you that's what you do. Those like Tony, what's the Tony? You're a professional uh, journalist, right? <laughs> yeah, I am. And you are, by the way, Tony Witten. If you haven't read his stuff, um, check him out. Follow him, Tony. What's the what's the site? Is it you have a blog? I have a blog, TonyWitten.com, and working on another project I hope to announce soon. But um, to get, I mean, I if, Tony is, I know that I, and I've worked with you ever. I've seen your work. You, you really work hard to make sure that, you know, you triple check sources and information, right? Before you put anything out. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I didn't see the story. So it must have went up and came down before I even had a chance to see it. Um, uh, and so I, I, I don't want to be armchair quarterbacking the situation. Uh, I will say, though, I can say, though, in general, um, confirmation of a medical condition like that, you you normally get not just someone saying it. You actually try to get confirmation from a medical person. Uh, a document is often very helpful. Um, and you, you you try to make sure that you're you're being correct because – no offense, but lay people sometimes misunderstand or don't act, are not actually getting the correct information. So you want to verify something with a doctor. Yeah, I think there's a word for that. Um, it's uh, oh, it starts with an F and ends with ache news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you one thing because you're talking about verification. I spoke to Mike Davy, and he was like, "Look, I fully believe that you're in contact with this family, but I need you to." you know, have them get in contact with me because not that I don't trust you, Tony, but that, but that 
I want to hear it from the people that are actually experiencing it, not through a third party. And I think that's exactly kind of like what you're saying is that when it comes to a medical thing, let's go talk to a medical professional, not someone that heard it might have been this. And then all of a sudden that becomes our narrative that, oh, this is our first Corona death because we want to be the first to report on it. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely. ridiculous. I, absolutely. And the, Yac- I'm the, Yac- the Islander News should um, write an apology to that family. That's what I think. I agree. All right. At least, yeah, you can't because they, they put it on like Facebook and then there was comments and then they just kind of pulled it, huh? Yeah. They, like they once you publish it like that and people are responding, you gotta write something like, "Oh, sorry, yeah, we didn't. Yeah. Pull it. We weren't. Yeah. You know, you it's, it's, it's called I mean, a correction. Yeah. yeah exactly. All news organizations exactly. make mistakes. Yeah. Exactly. You issue a clear correction and 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 put it out there. Yeah. That's what I was. That's what I was going to ask you, Tony. That's what the, yeah. Yeah. you just do. I mean, the Islander has a, a correction every week, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Yeah. It's impossible not to make mistakes when writing. I could tell you. Right. And we say stuff here that we make mistakes all the all time. All the time. But no, we'll we can because we're but, saying that this is... Well, we'll, well, we we'll admit no it, you know? <laughs> we'll admit it. We'll admit it. Okay. <laughs> right. Last thing. Let me tell you... Well, second to last thing. Let me tell you about what's going on with the 4th of July parade. Oh, we geez. had a meeting this week. I'm nervous. And uh, the general consensus at the meeting is that it's very unlikely that we have a parade on the 4th in the way that we've had parades for the last 61 years. Oh, so sad. Don't tell me that. Okay, but... I know, but you believe it, right? You can still you can believe it when he says that. That's but just, that- let me tell you, that the so we're, we're working on things that we can do, uh, you know, to hype people up. We're still going to try and get the jets to fly over at 11 a.m. We're still going to... We're going to ask people, you know, probably... The first things that come to mind is like get people flags and have them fly them on their balconies and outside their houses and stuff like that and facilitate a way for people to get flags. Um, t-shirts, we're still going to make T-shirts. I was going to say, will there be a T-shirt? Yeah, there's still going to be a T-shirt. <laughs> it's going to double as a mask. You can wear. Rafa, oh, Rafa, I, I don't mean I don't mean to like uh, interject here, but man, I think it'd be really really cool if not this year, but maybe a year in the future where uh, you guys collaborated with maybe like Vic Garcia, who's like a local Key Biscayne kid, who's an artist now to like design like the t-shirt. Oh I man, that see, really that's, really so, I would, that's, 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 that could still be on the table. I have to talk to my guy. He might've already put the down payment in for the art this year. Um, this would I'm be sure he would do the art for free, free, by the t-shirt way. This year than ever before. And this is the year. Yeah. It better be a good one. So, okay. I'll, I'll keep that thought in mind. Let me tell you a little more, though. So if, if for any reason we can have some kind of tone down, like imagine that we're allowed to be out a little more than we are right now on the 4th of July, but, but you can't have like a, you're not going to get a permit for a mass gathering or something like that, right? Then we might do, you know, things where we encourage people to uh, maybe drive around uh, with the flags on their car or things like that. We're kind of brainstorming. And we can kind of put together a full parade, even if it doesn't have everything, like all the floats and all the bands, in about two weeks. Right. You can, I, I was going to... I didn't get a chance to talk to you, but I think that's a perfect opportunity to do a live stream performance that you could still have some of the... some of Some, not all, of the performers in there and have a parade-type experience that you can share online. Right. All that is what we're planning. If we cannot go out at all on that day, you know, if everybody still has to stay home and if you can't even have a barbecue with your friends and depending on the situation, we will slow, like kind of adapt to, to the rules and not try and encourage people to congregate all in the street at the same time in a very crowded place. If for some miracle reason, we can have a large gathering like that on the 4th. We can put it together in two weeks, maybe even a week to get enough things going. It won't be the super parade like that we've always had, but we can pretty much get the stage and all that stuff. And Austin on the MC in in like three days uh, time. Yeah, like, you, can, you can pull that together. The uh, The one sad bit of news is that you know what we will not be doing or not be having what? this year. Fireworks on the beach. 
it, no, is the Fourth uh, of July fundraiser party. And that, oh, yeah, that definitely. Sure. Yeah. And the oh, other bad. thing, that's like, a top, that's like a top five party on the key yearly, yeah. top three to five. It used to be top three. What happened? <laughs> well, the full moon party joined the. Oh, you're right. And I will say, oh, sorry. I will say that I talked to uh, Mayor Davy, Mayor Mike Davy, who's in the chat right now, um, and he told me that. Uh, you know, if we can't have a parade, then maybe we can put something on. Or he was encouraging putting something on as soon as we can. So even if it's not on the 4th of July, we do something after on a later date. Um, just to like, it could be to celebrate the end of this or the day, that you know, the, the kind of thing. And, and, and so that's still a possibility. So because of the situation, we could probably get a permit to do something else at a later time. Why hey, I have an idea, Austin? Rafa. I have an idea. I have an idea, too. Which what one? about you go a... First. Uh, what about? I'm sorry, Anna. You want to go first? <laughs> no, you go first. You go first. Because I'll forget. Um, what about a? Oh, I forgot. I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, so, what if it were a community parade where, like, uh, everybody gets in their golf carts and you drive to like Bear Cut over the Bear Cut Bridge and back in your golf carts? You know, so no one's no one's sitting somewhere. No one's gathering um but instead you're in your sort of a, the giant caravan exactly well, so th- that would turn into a huge gathering so we'd have to be careful about that but it, it, well, then it, everyone can go home and fire up a zoom and join there <laughs> well i was just gonna say get austin in face paint put him on the back of a pickup truck and put some sirens on and go visit everybody <laughs> yeah, i like idea. that too so our, our rafa our fire let me ask you two questions fireworks are they done or oh, and or is having a 4th of July parade, like in September, even possible? So, number one, we don't do the fireworks, but I guess the... I, 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 you know, I would assume they're still happening, just because... I don't, I don't know. I don't think the village has even talked about that yet, but I would think that they... You know, why wouldn't they put them so on? Because you can... Hey, the- I have another idea. I have another idea for the fireworks. What if... Um, they've been talking about this before anyway. We do, like, a drone show over the middle of the village so no matter where you live you can go outside and like if it's over you know the village green all the way up there it's a drone show on the right right over the entire island and it, the, actually the drones could fly around the islands and do little little uh, shows in each of the neighborhoods that'd be pretty sick these are things i will be writing down and can you do a fourth of july parade in september i don't know maybe we can Maybe it can, it can, the 4th Cares. of July committee could help us put on some kind of Key Biscayne parade or something that makes more sense in October when it's like the village day or something like that. And it's, it's kind of a grand celebration again. Yeah, I mean, the 4th of July ha- for, uh, board or whatever has their best party in April anyway. Exactly. There and you go. So the last thing I have written down here is that uh, I don't know if about you guys, and maybe you don't qualify, but I got my Trump bucks today in my checking account. And uh, I didn't think I was going to get them because I didn't think the IRS had my bank information. <laughs> and I kind of heard that Trump was going to s- put his signature on the physical check. So I was kind of excited to get the physical Ew. one. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> but it turns out the IRS did have my bank information and I got the full 1200 bucks in my bank account going today. going to dinner, baby. Oh, we're yeah, not. right. We're parties. going to take out the dinner. And I'm, you know, I'm letting it rain Trump bucks yeah. this Good week. Yeah, Trump was just closed because half, half, half of that would have been gone tonight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe you can meet us at the Winn Dixie bar. Oops. No, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at oh, that, the baby. baby. Aww. We have a visitor on Zoom, guys. Aww. Yeah, so I'm wondering if anybody else got their Trump bucks or if you guys even qualify. I don't even know if you guys qualify. My- my wife, my wife got hers, but no, she, no, no, but we didn't get uh, the extra five hundred per kid. So what? you got to start going to work already. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't get crap. <laughs> They're still sending him out. Yeah. And he got a bill instead of a check. Well, yeah, if probably. you qualify, I would uh, check your bank accounts. If you're uh, another thing, the uh, if you if you're losing, you know, if you. If you're not making as much as you were before and you're an independent contractor, you can apply for one of those, uh, those paycheck loan. protection loans so you know. And you should look that SS- up because 
What's it called? The SS what? SSB the SBA S- PPA. Yeah. That's what it is. Right. PPA PPP. Right. Paycheck Protection Program. If you're yeah. an independent contractor, you can file and you just average last year's wages. And if you're making less now, you can take a loan for the difference and the loan will be forgiven. Um, so I need yeah. that. I need I need you to share that info with me. Okay, I will. Um, in, and in, that's in, it. In, Huh? What about baseball being canceled, man? He just got that uh, got that info. I, um, I, I'm glad you brought that up. We everyone that is part of the baseball program received an email today saying that it's officially canceled. Um, you may recall that this whole thing came down like two days before opening day. We had had the draft and everything already. The teams were set, and the opening day was a you know still a couple of days away. Tony, right? Yeah. So I sent an email back. I, I tried to. I didn't. I guess I didn't have you in my memory because I tried typing your name in, but it didn't show up. Um, I wrote back to David, uh, Adriana, and Alfie, and I and I copied all a bunch of the coaches. And I said, "Hey, listen, what if, like, I, I predict that this summer a lot of people, usually in the key in the summer, people really take off, right? They're gone. They go to wherever." I predict this summer, by the time this thing whole this thing settles down or to any sort of sense of normalcy, uh, or as close to that as possible, it will be maybe like June, July. Yeah, we'll stick around July and August. Let's keep an open mind to maybe reshuffling the deck and saying, "Hey, does anyone still want to have a baseball season? We can do something in July and August. We can play late afternoon, late evening, you know, afternoon evening games. Uh, we can reset, uh, see what the ages are." The could be co-ed it could be you know just something fun and, and to come back within the the guidelines that are set for that time so that was my response um i think i, I think just asked to keep an open mind to, to it i think manny's doing everything because every other coach in the league is now realized that manny rionda will not win the championship this year so i think manny's doing everything he can to keep his streak going um because Manny is a Manny is the is the marked man for baseball coaching on Key Biscayne. Tony, I didn't. That's not self inflicted for sure. I mean, I know every, every league needs a Yankees or something, but uh, it's this is not the way to keep the streak going, in my opinion. No, I'll tell I'll tell everyone this. A lot of people because I've also re, I've also faced the same type of stuff in football and basketball mostly, but. A lot of people, they look at Manny, they're like, oh, I don't like him. His teams always win. He must know. How. <laughs> the truth is this. This is the truth. The truth is that um, he's the best coach on Key Biscayne. So the best coach on Key Biscayne is going to have teams win more often than not. So if you want to be better than him, then, you know, be a, you know, be a better coach than he is. Otherwise, Ooh. stop complaining. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. Thanks. I'm, we're going to start some coaching clinics in the fall. So come on. Zoom out. clinics. Zoom coaching clinics. Zoom coaching clinics. Oh, my gosh. First of all, I got my backdoor neighbor just joined us, Leslie. <laughs> What's up? All right. Do you guys have any uh, calendar for us? That's about it for topics. On Friday at 6 p.m. <laughs> we are the one. world. We are the world. If it's Can you do a Zoom so I can see it happen? happen? It's going to play. Okay. <laughs> I saw I saw something that's pretty cool. I mean, since we're reporting, I mean, the, the calendar is virtual stuff. Um, it looks like there's on April 18th, which is Saturday, One World Together at Home, global broadcast and digital special to support uh, frontline healthcare workers in the WHO, uh, curated by Lady Gaga, and then a ridiculous list of that's not local. artists uh, coming through it. So everybody. Uh, even David and Victoria Beckham are going to be there. So uh, Jack Black, I mean, just uh, even David and Victoria Beckham, even them. <laughs> I'm, uh, uh, Oprah Winfrey, Paul McCartney, Pharrell Williams. Uh, so basically, it's a Joe Biden rally, is what it is. Uh, let me see, Billy Ray Cyrus. He might be a Trumper. He's going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So check it out. I'm sure you'll see it going through your chats. It looks pretty cool. Um, Lady Gaga's curating One World Together at Home on April 18th. All right, but I t- saw one thing. Local. I saw that's one local, local thing. I saw one local thing that's pretty cool is that, um, like, uh, Zoo Miami, the PAM, the Arsh Center, yeah. they have all these virtual tours now that you can just, like, go on your computer or your phone or whatever, and uh, you can kind of take, like a, like, a, like, a virtual walking tour of these places 
and it, it looked for I, I got on one of them earlier today and it it looked pretty cool i mean we got nothing better to do we're here at home we might as well learn some stuff good idea yep. winwood's doing stuff like that too local look yeah we're gonna do a tour of Wendix say live <laughs> on instagram tomorrow. Manny, quick Let question without answer. revealing without revealing your secret spot where do you drop in the paddleboard if everything's like locked down we'll talk about that later it's at somebody's <laughs> house it's on the bay side so Wait, the other thing is the yacht, the I, yacht club I, actually the yacht club is yacht, doing I'll a be, sunset now i but I'm, I'm there boo <laughs> yacht club's doing a virtual sunset that's a that's a local that's thing that is oh local. that is cool how do you how do you see yeah, that what about lenny um, you it's be out by the weaver lot it's it's uh, the Key Biscayne Yacht Club virtual sunset tour, and it's on the Key Biscayne Yacht Club um, Instagram. There you go. That's yeah. nice. what I'm talking about. When is that? Friday night? Friday night at sunset, whenever that is. So right as We Are the World is being played, this and we get on. <laughs> yes. Right after We Are the World, we check the sunset out. There you, there you go. go. <laughs> right, well, I miss you guys. I miss seeing you in person. I know. Same. Right? Oh, guys. Openings and closings. They've officially put locks on every key Biscayne beach access. Talk about wow. closing. No, Vicento okay. is, is not doing takeout anymore. I think that might be older news. I don't know. That is older it, news, but we didn't talk about that. That's true. Yeah. No, Vicento openings and closings. Yeah. Um, uh, La Scala is absolutely open for business. Yeah. Uh, Randazzo's, um, Aisha. Origin. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't been to Origin, but La Scala. Did I mention La Scala? Yeah. The best. I think Manny's trying to get a free meal or something. That's a, that's, I that's like, uh, Pomodori's open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that Empanadas pizza. is open. Wait, did uh, oh, La Scala? La Scala's open. I don't know if anyone mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Well, hey, uh, Tony and Tony, uh, thank you so much for being part of this today. You guys were a great addition. Tony Winton, uh, continue to health for you and your wife. Yes. yes. Thank you. Seeing you out there on the loser lap, riding your bike around the key, looking for cul-de-sacs soon. <laughs> um, so if you guys have anything to say, anything else, I, I was going to go through, now is the time to go through the comments and see if anybody said anything. And I'll tell you a couple of things. Uh, Mayor Davey said that why not on doing the, um, the fireworks that they haven't, uh, yeah. that they haven't uh, done anything yet, but why not? Um, and um, that's about all I see here. Um, Roman says... I, I had a bunch of comments that I was going to share, but they're probably super boring. So Roman Rob, says he wants to skydive into the 4th of July. And that's it. And that's how you do it. You just do it enough. I want to thank all the listeners <laughs> for being here and listening to us uh, talk shit. And I want to tell you to go to uh, ratradio.net and subscribe so that you can uh, get the podcast. You don't have to be here live every time. I right. want to thank Tony and Tony. Thank I want to thank guys. Lenny. I want to thank hey. Manny and that weird background he's got. And uh, <laughs> I want to thank Anna, who I'm not forgetting this show. Thank you. Oh, yay. You're going you're gonna to call my background weird, and Tony Winton has like a toadfish behind him. <laughs> <laughs> you have two dogs. I've got Chico there. next to me, Chico and Tilly. And Tony, all right. I think like I used to it, it so I guess. Fun. Yeah. Bye guys. All right, so yeah, that's it, and I guess we'll play out the uh, the little uh, the little outro jingle time. Uh, have, a great week. have a great week, everyone, and uh, stay safe out there. I guess. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Wash your hands. Bye, Bye everybody. See you guys later. Bye. Bye.